Hello friends, welcome to another video. Another video on uh, thinking out of the box and uh, improving the visualization. This video was triggered by one of the question asked by uh, one of my customer and when I was working on their project and that triggered me to actually create a video. This is going to be two part video. In the first part, I will explain what we're trying to achieve and then we will look at the very simple solution. And in the part two, um, at the end of this video, I will explain what the part two is going to be. And we will look into more advanced um, uh, functionality. Um, so let's get to Power BI and just walk through what we're trying to achieve here and then look at the solution. Here in this report, the ask was um, to allow to sort the columns in the matrix visual. Actually, these columns can be in any of the visuals, but uh, I'm, we are looking at the matrix visual here. So right now we have a sales and the quantity. And um, the ask was, can we control this sort order uh, in a way uh, that the sort order is not predefined in the report, but actually we, we have some metadata where we uh, store the sort order and then use that to sorting how the column should look like. So uh, before we further go into that, um, what this sales and quantities, again, uh, calculation groups is, uh, is, is, is one of those areas which I really love working with. And, uh, and, and there is a reasoning why there was a calculation group used because there were so many other um, items which can be only achieved with calculation groups. And one of that was a multi-currency um, symbols on the sales do, uh, value. So that's why the calculation group was used. Um, so again, I'm going to quickly on the calculation groups, there is only, so calculation group is just called calculation group and the column name is CG in the calculation group. I'm not going into the details how to create the calculation groups. There are a lot of videos I've uh, already um, uh, prepared on it. So the sales is returning the sales and the quantity is of course returning the quantity measure. And if you know there is a ordinal uh, for the each calculation item, by default, it is negative one. So the way you create the calculation item, that stays the sort order. But if you want to create your own sort order, um, uh, or if you want to sort the things the way you want it, like for example, in this case, you want quantity before sales. We all know, right now the sales ordinal value is zero, so it means first, and uh, the quantity is second. So basically the calculation items are sorted by the ordinal. So if I want my quantity to be first, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the ordinal for this to zero and then quantity here you see becomes first and then the sales. And if we apply these changes and go back to Power BI, uh, so just quickly, yeah. So go back to Power BI. So quantity will be uh, the first column and the sales will be the second column. So basically with the ordinal, you can um, uh, manage the order, how you want to see those calculation items. And that's pretty much it, what you can do with the sorting. Now, again, as I said, the ask here was um, to give create the sort order outside the calculation items rather than manually um, changing here uh, through the calculation, through the tabular editor, going into the calculation item and adding the sort order. So how we can create the sort orders, let's say we are managing the sort order somewhere else um, uh, outside in a database, in a table, or an Excel sheet or a SharePoint list or whatever the use case could be. So to showcase that, the, the simple thing is like, I'm just gonna create a, a, a external table here, uh, which will store the sort order. So I can have a table called, um, again, this table can be stored somewhere else. So I'm calling it calculation group sort order. Um, then let's say we call um, what the calculation group uh, item is and uh, and what the sort order for that would be. Let's call it calculation group sort. And uh, then let's say the calculation group, uh, the, the calculation item is called sales and the quantity is the, is the calculation item. Now this name has to match with the calculation item in the, uh, in the calculation group. So let's say in this case, I want my sales to be first and then my quantity. So, 
if, if I have a more calculation items, then I will list all those here. Now we, we have this disconnected table, which is basically storing the sort metadata. And uh, now we need to apply that into, into our, um, uh, in the sorting for the calculation items. Here we have the, here we have the table which we just created. So calculation group item and calculation group sort. So what we need to do is uh, we need to, the one way could be, okay, creating the relationship between the calculation group table, calculation group and uh, this new sort order table. Unfortunately, when you try to create the relationship, you see some error message. So basically you cannot create the relationship between the calculation group table, which looks like a table, but it's a it's special properties. And then you cannot create the relationship between uh, any, uh, with any other table with the calculation group table. So the, the way you wanna do this is then add a new column in your calculation group table. So it's called new column. So I'm gonna call it uh, calculation group uh, group sort. So the expression is going to be, uh, first we store the um, calculation item. Uh, let's call it calculation item, which is just the CG, CG. So the first CG is the name of the calculation group table. And the second is the CG is the name of the column within that calculation group. And now what we can return is we can use the lookup and uh, other ways as well, whatever we want, but uh, or we can use uh, um, calculate max of our calculation group sort table, which we just created. And we want the, the value of the sort um, column from that table and filter it on where calculation group sort table calculation group item is equal to the one which we stored in a variable, which is calculation item. So now what this is gonna return is, uh, it's gonna match the sales calculation item with our external sort table and get the sort order value. So let's quickly take a look at the calculation group table here. How does that look like now with added with this new column? So if we go to the calculation, so here you go. So we have a calculation sales and the quantity and the ordinal, which is a part of the calculation group column one and zero. And then this is our new column one and two, which is coming from our external table where we are storing the sort order. So here, once we have a sort column in our table, it looks like it is pretty straightforward from here, but let's just double check. So what we will do is we will um, sort our calculation items by the new columns which we added, which is CG sort. Let's try that. So I'm gonna select the CG column and then um, go into column tools and sort by column and the CG. Right now it is sorted by ordinal, of course, because that's why we're seeing quantity first and then the sales. But uh, if we try to sort it by CG sort, uh, uh, assuming it, it should work, but then we get this error, uh, which is circular dependency error. I'm not going into detail about this error. There is an amazing blog post on circular dependency, uh, why it happens. Uh, the reason why it is happening in this case is just to give an idea, because we're trying to, we're using the CG column to calculate our CG sort column and that is causing that uh, dependency, uh, circular dependency. So how we overcome this? Um, to do this, what we need to do is instead of using, because we want to sort the calculation item, the, which is quantity and sales. So we need to um, find the sort order on a different column. So here we're gonna take advantage of the ordinal column rather than the uh, CG uh, calculation group item column. So what we're gonna do is go back to our metadata I'm just uh, in the Power Query because we are storing it in uh, in a in a table within um, within Power BI. So right now we have a calculation item sales and quantity and then sort order. So I will add another column here. Uh, actually, we don't need the CG item column here, but what we need is CG ordinal column. So we know for the sales the ordinal is right now one and for quantity it is zero. So we have to be very, very specific because this is what we're gonna match, uh, what the ordinal value for the calculation item is and match that with our uh, external table, the sort table, uh, and then, then get the new sort value. 
So uh, the way we again just want to double check. So if we go back to our calculation group and see on the quantity, our ordinal value is zero. Uh, and for the sales, our ordinal value is one. And that's what uh, uh, we are doing in, in this table. For sales, we have one and for the quantity, we are giving zero. So OK. And uh, of course, the type of this will be a, a whole number. Let's close and apply these changes. So once that table is loaded, what we need to do is our, our CG sort column, which is a calculated column we created in our calculation group table. Instead of using the CG um, column name, we're going to use the ordinal. So, so we get the ordinal, the, what the existing sort order number is. Again, this column is automatically get created when you create a calculation group. So what we're going to do is, okay, we still need the CG sort column from our external sorting table. And instead of matching CG sort um, uh, item, we're going to uh, calculation item ordinal. So let's change it. So the, okay. So the end result is going to be the same. Uh, we will get one and two for the, for the each calculation item. So just quickly double check that. So here you go for the sales, we get one and the quantity we get two. And now we get this one and two based on the ordinal value, not based on the calculation group column. So now because that this is because we want to avoid that circular dependency issue. So what we're going to do now, we go to the CG and sort by column. And now we can sort it by this new calculated column, which we created CG sort. So everything should work. Now you will see the sales come first and the quantity comes second. Now it does not matter in the calculation group, however we sort the um, calculation items, whatever the ordinal number we give, but now we are overwriting that by creating our external sorting order, what we wanted it to be, and then using that to sort our calculation items. Tomorrow, if the need arise, that quantity need to be first and the sales after, we don't need to go to calculation group. We can just come back to our external CG sort table and change the uh, sort value for those um, calculation items and then this will work. Again, this video is just a, a prerequisite of the other video which I'm going to make part two video. But here I want to explain what we want to do and that we want to sort the uh, columns uh, doesn't matter where we use now these columns but at least we have external sorting on our columns in the part two video uh, we are going to uh, try to make it happen that okay maybe if this is a a report seen by the different customers and what we want is if customer a has a requirement that i want to see the quantity first and then the sales and the second customer want, I want to see the sales first and the quantity first. Right now, within Power BI, even within the calculation group, we have no mechanism that the same visual changes the sort order of the columns based on the customer or the user who is looking at these reports. So in part two video, we will address that, how we can take it to the next level where the sort order of the columns will change based on in this particular example what i will show is based on a company we have selected and then the sort order will change stay tuned do subscribe my channel let me know what you guys think about this video uh, i have done tons of video and calculation groups uh, do check out all those videos they are very important and very corner cases they they address uh, some some common business problem and always looking forward for your feedback once again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two video. Thank you. Bye for now.